This is Boxing Ticket to NI in association with SB Sports. We're delighted to be joined once again with Emma Brennan. How are you, Emma? Yeah, all good. Um, deep in training for um, the point in September. So, yeah, really, really picking the training up now, as you can see, small little black eyes. So, that means I'm back sparring. Yeah, happy out. Obviously, coming into the second fight as a professional. Um, very happy to go straight in from a fight in July to another fight in September. So, yeah, couldn't be happier. You must obviously, I guess, everybody's getting that buzz. You know, the card tripled in size yesterday. Obviously, initially it was Trum McKenna versus Esposito, yourself, and obviously Luke Keeler been announced in the card. And then you sort of looked at the card from yesterday, going three fights, and we now have nine. You know, it's for fans, and, and even for you, obviously, as a fighter, you see the fights and stuff been announced four weeks today. Obviously, you know, who would have thought your second pro fight to be back fighting in Dublin again? Yeah, look, I'm over the moon. Um, fighting so close to home, it's great. Fighting in Dublin, I haven't fought in Dublin since 2019. Obviously, that was as an amateur. Um, last fight, 2019, that was the elite final. So, um, good to be back in Dublin and look, sharing the car with some great fighters. Um, in terms of similar to my style, just coming forward, the fans and supporters are going to be in for a great night. Um, you have Kieran Malloy coming back off a, a great knockout Lou Keela, Tyrone McKenna it's very similar style to myself they want wars so yeah it's going to be yeah it's going to be a great night Do you, Are you sort of I know you know from what you've come through and everything else from the amateurs but are you sort of having to pinch yourself sort of in the fact that you're getting to share cards with such great fighters so early on in your career because the good thing for you is when you're around others it's a at a bigger, a bigger level in the pro game, that that you can obviously learn probably more wee things off each one as you're going along. Yeah, it, look, it's different to the amateurs, but don't get it wrong. Like I was boxing, I was around the best athletes in the world. Um, as an amateur, I was in the best setup in the world as an amateur. Um, when you go to the pros, a lot of a lot of stuff is on your own. Although you are against great fighters, um. In the amateurs, the guys around the best fighters in the world, twenty four seven. So um, it's a little bit different. But look, it's great to share a card with such great fighters, and to um, to be on such a big Dublin card is unbelievable. As I said, sharing the card with Luke Caron and Luke, people that I, I know very well, get on with very well. So um, yeah, it's it's just it's great because like. You look at where boxing was in Dublin two or three years ago or in Ireland as a whole, these shows were a million miles away. Like in the last year, you ha- after having Katie Taylor fighting in the tree arena, you had Michael Conlon. Now you have this and Katie Taylor again at the end of the year. It's um, night and day compared to where we were the last two or three years. So it's great to be to play a small part in it. Um, my job now is there is so many eyes on the show where so many different fighters from all over the country fighting on it. Great for all the boxers because there's more eyes on it. It's about me to go on and put a great performance now. I was going to say, sorry, you know, 2023 obviously has been massive for Irish boxing and obviously it probably couldn't have fell at a better time for you, you know, turning over obviously. Say you had your debut in July, you know, obviously getting a homecoming in Dublin. You don't really have to look too far. You don't even have to go outside of Ireland. You find a fight. So, that must be obviously soothing for you in a way that you're sort of not having the go away sort of forum this summer to get a fight. You know there's always going to be a fight on Irish shores. So it, it probably makes training somewhat easier for you in the fact that you don't have to worry about flights and paying, on, you know, going to another country with hotels and then paying for opponents. Everything's on your doorstep. So your friends and family and fans buying your tickets, obviously they help they pay for the opponent. These and that burden for you. Yeah, look, it's um, in terms of that, like it's it's a lot easier for people to access the fights and go and look at them. Um, if you're fighting over in London or you're fighting somewhere else, it's very hard for people to get the time off. They have to take a whole weekend off. Obviously, costs a lot more money. Um, which obviously takes away from the amount of tickets that you actually sell. But to get an opportunity to fight right on your doorstep is unbelievable. I wish it was against someone from Ireland that I'm fighting. Um, that's what I'm just sort of getting ahead of myself. 
I'm saying where I'm going to be in the next few months. A guy with love and all over his class. Um, again, it's a lot easier to sell to people. And then on top of that, um, it's a lot easier to grow up for. You're fighting against someone from your own country. Um, obviously, there's a lot more at stake. And obviously, I guess, the, the one fight you're going to have your eyes on on the card, obviously, seems to be a lot of bad blood being sort of built. And I'm maybe an instigator in some of that, but... Kevin Cronin and Craig McCarthy's fighting for the Irish super middleweight title. It you know, other than your fight, it's probably the fight you're probably more interested in watching because you you obviously want your hands in the winner. Yeah, I want my hands on the winner of that. Um obviously Darren is my manager and Kate Hell is fighting at the end of the year. So he he'll have one eye on that as well. Um there could be a possibility of the winner of, of my fight and the winner of that fight. Fighting on the Kate Taylor card, that's something that Darren is trying to explore. Um, again, that would make perfect sense. Talking about on the domestic scene, uh, at domestic level, I put myself ahead of the pile compared to the likes of Crown and McCarthy, Morrissey. Um, and then I have Darren, which obviously has great connections with Matchroom, great manager. So, um, yeah, if I get the win. And whoever wins that fight, um, I'm sure Darren's gonna be looking to try to get that on the Kate Taylor card. Which obviously there's a lot more there's a lot more at stake for me and there's a lot more at stake for the two lads fighting if that possibility does happen. Um it's nearly like a semi final. It's a it's a good karate dangle to them as well. You know, we, we obviously know that it was looking like potentially money might have been an issue and, and Cronin McCarthy being made and and that initial offer was obviously up and, and got the fight made. But when you're dangled on the card of going, do you want to fight in Katie Taylor's card? You would nearly fight for free, you know. So if you have that card, you sort of dangling up in front of the winner. Why are they going to say no? You know, it's another ex- another reason for them to say yes rather than going, well, what's the money like? The exposure being on a matchroom and the zone card all around the world on a Katie Taylor card, these chances aren't going to come along to you often. So, you know, for you to sort of wave out in front of someone and go, do you want to fight in Katie's card? You're fighting me, you're defending your belt. It's an easy one. Yeah, it's an easy one. It's an easy one to build as well in terms of a fight. Um, obviously, the two lads are after going into a bit of um, sort of wrestling antics to, to create a bit of buzz about it. Um, look, well done to the two lads because there is a lot of buzz around that fight. Um, I haven't, haven't seen much of McCarthy. I've looked at a few of Crown's fights. I looked at the two fights with um, Morrissey. Just doing, just having a look to see what he's good and what he's, what he's bad at. Um, it's a fight that I would be very, very comfortable in winning. Obviously, I can't really say much on the McCarthy side because I haven't looked at him. But if I got the opportunity to fight Crown, that's a fight I believe I would win by stoppage. Um, as I said, coming back off the... Off my amateur pedigree, I know amateur and pros are different, but I've just boxed at a completely different level compared to these guys. Um, but yeah, what a show that would be if we could get if we could get that on the the Katie Taylor show would be unbelievable. Again, you can't look past this. I wasn't really happy with my um, performance on the debut. I suppose you're coming off a two year layoff um, against a tough, durable opponent. At, on the night, I know you were talking to me, I was disgusted that I didn't get me out of there. But in hindsight, I looked at her back and um, probably the best thing that could have happened was getting the six rounds, getting the ring rushed out of the way. And then obviously since then, I've gone on and done some very good sparring um, with Paul, yeah, with Callum Smith. So um, come September 16th, I'm going to be a completely different animal than what was in the ring um, in July. Is it sort of more for you, it's taking the stabilizers off now, obviously, where you might have, you know, and, and I and I said the on the night, obviously the, the sixth round was good for you, but is it more, and I know you shared clips in the last couple of days of obviously you dropping and uh, people and things like that in the amateurs, is it more for you now going and rather than sort of being defensive sort of what's coming back, the plan is now just full on attack, because obviously it's, you know, it's it's they, they get these opportunities to put people out of there, you know, I guess in hindsight, sometimes it's all well and good to have these intentions, but if you get an opponent that obviously it doesn't want to sort of dance too much, you know, you probably maybe have to chase it too much. So it's, I guess for you, it's having caution somewhat as well, because we know obviously the dangers in boxing and, you know, one punch going back the other way could change things very dramatically. 
Yeah, you're going to see the best of me against people that are coming to actually win a fight. Uh, we are meeting each other head on um, over the likes of eight, ten rounds. That's where you are going to see the best of me. I knew straight away from the first round, the first backhand that I caught that lad on the debut, I knew I wasn't getting him out of there. He went on the skates straight away. Very, very good at covering up. Um, in hindsight, looking at the fight, I was very happy to get the six rounds. And even during the fight, I never really put her on him. Um, what I've been working on since then is putting on a lot more pressure. Going back to where I was in the amateurs, I was relentless in the amateurs, just non-stop pressure, lots of hooks, body shots. Um, that's what we're going back to now. Um, it will be very, very hard for anyone at domestic level, a super middleweight, to keep me off them. I guess the confidence sort of comes now as well, and I know you. You'd sort of said to me in Belfast, I you know I'm back straight back into the gym. You obviously then when you realise you obviously have to have a reward. You had a few days off. You were able to eat some nasty food, um, mm -hmm. but but obviously what's changed for you now? Obviously we've seen the, the spar and with Potty and and with Calm Smith. Is it whenever you don't have a fight now, it's trying to gain that top level experience to bring you on even faster than than you'd hoped. Yeah, look, you, you can't really turn down the likes of that sparring. Um, Paddy, obviously, after headlining on the failure, he's 17, 18, and now looks like he's going on to some really good things. So that's sparring that you, you just can't turn down. It's a valuable experience. Um, wasn't actually too happy how he sparred against Paddy, but look, there's no winners in sparring. You, you're just there to learn. And then, obviously, Callum Smith, he's, he's one of the best in the world. Um for Canelo being world champion about the fight with, with Terbiev. So um again that's a chance I couldn't really I couldn't turn down. I was quite happy how I got on with that spar. Again, you take good things from spars, bad things from spars, but um to be in around that level and hold me on, I'm quite happy. Again, the stuff that you're learning from them as far as it's invaluable. And on top of that, it's just about keeping sharp in between camps. Um so now, obviously, I picked the spar enough coming into this fight. Coming off two great spars with top lads, you're only going to get better. Um, I'm off sparring Luke Keela next week. So um, I'm just staying on top of the rounds, trying to get two good spars in per week. If you can do that over the space of four to six weeks, that's uh, it's invaluable when it comes to a fight night. I didn't really have that before the debut because I only got three weeks notice. I think we had three three spars before the debut. So um that's gonna stand to me. Not, not only in terms of my fitness levels, in terms of my sharpness and my ability, it's only gonna get better when you're getting top level sparring like that. And obviously, I guess, you know, con con boxing in a way, obviously I, I know that that you're you would obviously know the family very well. Obviously, the father John obviously would have involved a lot of coaching with you in Dublin. Conlon boxing obviously I don't know, obviously, you look outside of mainland UK now and obviously you look at what Jamie Mick's doing and, you know, the first big show, obviously, other than Katie in, in quite a long time in Dublin, they just seem to be here just to, here to make a statement and, you know, it looks like 14 fights, you know, looks like 14 fights going to be on the card in total. What what a night that, you know, it features to be and, you know, I guess it's somebody grabbing a bull by the horns now and, and making a statement like Kieran Malloy did in Fela, making that statement to make people walk away going, oh, I was seriously, seriously impressed with Emmett Brennan or I was impressed with such and such. Is that what it is for you now? Is they make that statement, make people leave the RDS arena with nothing but your name on their lips? Yeah, of course. Um, as I said, if you're saying there's 12 to 14 fights there, um, that means there's going to be a lot more noise on the, the show. It's going to probably be you're going to have 12 to 14 fights from all over Ireland, so you'll have a lot more always all over the country on the show, which is great. Um, For me, I've got to put in a great performance. It's got to be a lot better than where the debut was. Um, We don't have an opponent at the moment. There was obviously, I was talking to Darren last night. Um, We came up with one or two opponents that we'd like to fight. If they're realistic or not, we don't know 100%. Um, but these fighters will come to fight, and it'll, it'll just... For me, it makes a lot more sense to have someone that's going to give, that's going to attack and give me the opportunities to counter against them, rather than someone that's running. And I know it's only my second fight, but 
as I said, I want to be up at Celtic or his title in my next fight, if not the next fight, the one after. And going back to what you said, Conlon are running so many shows. Um, I think between September and the end of the year, they're going to have at least three shows. It looks like Dublin, Galway and Belfast, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so there will be more opportunities to fight again by the end of the year. Um, again, that's if I don't go on the Katie Taylor show. But I need to put on a great performance. I need a, a highlight reel of a knockout. Um, and yeah, not really. There's no point in having a highlight reel of a knockout against a Johnny man that's five foot two and twenty pounds out of our way. Um, people just laughing at you more than celebrating the victory. But if you get a highlight reel against someone that's coming to the fight, um, yeah, that look great. And of course, I want people going away from that show. Um. Talking about me, you have Luke is on the fight, Thomas is on the fight, so there's going to be a lot of dubs there. I think said Stenham might be announced on it. Um, so there's going to be a lot of dubs there, and it'd be great for me to put on a good show. Definitely, what well, I would say, you know, I, I remember obviously a three arena four Katie's card, and obviously with Thomas Carty and up the main sort of card, the place was packed. You know, people in people in Dublin are the same in Belfast, they'll come and watch and come and support everybody they can, and and even more so. When it's when it's Dubliners on the card, they'll be there. They'll watch you all. And I guess for you, it's obviously it's now starting to think four weeks from now that atmosphere in the RDS Arena. It's you know it's a nice close knit um, venue as well. So obviously everybody's come on top of each other. You know you'd sort of you nearly be thinking at times as Craig, I can't hear myself think. You know the the atmosphere will be that incredible on the night. Yeah, they look. Um... It's going to be incredible. Dublin has been starved of boxing like this over the past few years. As you said, besides some Katie Taylor's fight, we haven't had much big shows. Um, nothing of this magnitude anyway. This, this like I had up the other night, it is historic. The RDS, I think the last person that fought there was Barney McGuigan in maybe 1991 or 89 or something like that. You're talking over 30 years at this stage. So this has the potential to be a historic night for Dublin. Um, and what it can bring from this, you're, you're growing a fan base again, you're getting people buzzing about boxing. The Bernard Dunn days, like, he was selling out non-stop. Um, I think this is definitely the start of of something new to come from professional boxing uh, in Dublin over the next four to five years. Um, we've been starved of it. Definitely, I think I, I firmly believe, obviously, in the same way that <clears throat> Belfast obviously regrowing with obviously Ryan Burnett and Carl Frampton retiring. Mm. Obviously, we're having the same. It just seems to be there's there's pockets now. Obviously, Galway seems to be Kieran Malloy. You know, it's obviously who takes the mantle for Dublin. It seems to be that every big big city in Ireland can obviously have someone that can be the spotlight and the focus and centre of attention. But every big city in Ireland. Can obviously have fight nights, you know. We've obviously had the, the Cork shows, we've obviously had shows in Waterford, Dublin, Galway. You know, where's going to be the next town or next next city is going to be the one day to show what it, its hand is in boxing? But it seems like you could nearly just pick any random place and people will fill it out at the moment. Everybody wants to get behind the, the regrowing of Irish boxing. Yeah, of course they do. But like for that as well, you need competitive fights. Like what uh, Crown and McCarthy are doing, they're fighting each other. Um, you have another fight there at middleweight McCormick and Dunnigan, they're fighting each other. And you need this to grow the sport. There's no point in putting these shows on and just having 10 fights against journeymen. You need, like, this card here in um, this card in the audience, you need co- competitive fights from the top to the bottom. Obviously, you're going to have one or two journeymen for, for the people that have one or two fights. Um, I think there might be one or two debuts on the show as well. Obviously, you're going to have them join you, man, either, either on on the show. But you need competitive fights for the sport to grow. You need Irish people fighting Irish people. And if they're not fighting Irish people, you need them fighting Scottish, Welsh, English people that are at a competitive level. Um, for people to stay in touch with the sport and continue to uh, support the, to the sport, they need competitive fights. And that's what that's what I'm trying to deal with at Silver Middleway. Um, as I said earlier, I think at this stage of my career, 
Um, I should probably be in against the likes of uh, Crown and McCarthy, Morrissey. I should be in against them lads straight away. Um, I'm looking to progress quickly. Not only am I looking to progress quickly, I'm looking to be in good fights. And they're the, the fights that I think I should be in right now in this stage of my career. Yes. Well, look, obviously, well, well, thank you for your time as always. Obviously, we know you're cut it out and ready to go and do some some work in the gym. We obviously get this done yeah. early this morning before you start up. Yeah. But obviously, enjoy your last couple of weeks of camp. Um, Obviously, for anybody, it's obviously after tickets for the show. You have your own individual link. So if they follow your link for tickets, you'll obviously get your commission and things off that. But enjoy mm. your next couple of weeks. And obviously, we'll see you in fight week in Dublin um, whenever you move to 2-0. Yeah. Appreciate that very much. And look, it's going to be a great night again. Uh, thanks for anyone that has bought tickets off me already. And anyone that's looking to buy tickets, just get in touch with me through um, Instagram and I'll send us on the link. Listen, thanks very much for your time, Emma. And we'll yeah, speak to you soon. Great. All right, thanks cheers. very much. Cheers. Right, bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye.